want to welcome everyone to the premiere of Overlay Underlay. This is where I will bring you information on anything from politics to uh, human rights to relationships to just everyday living from my perspective as a baby boomer but also from the perspective of overlay for the underlay. And I guess many folks would say, well, what is overlay for the underlay? Let me break it down for you. <laughs> so when you hear of uh, narratives of things, you know, people will say, oh, we're this and we're that. Let's take the United States, for example. The United States is supposed to be the home of the free, the place where everybody wants to migrate to. Uh, to fulfill the American dream, right? That's the narrative. But the truth of it is that folks like me, Blacks, African Americans, we're still looking for the land of the free. So the narrative of it being uh, home of the brave and the free, that's the overlay. But we see what the real underlay is, is that America is very racist. And the stories that they tell to the world is not true. So that's a case of overlay for the underlay. Right. right. So that's what my show is all about. My brand, Overlay for the Underlay, is a saying that uh, we have been using for decades. And, and I have now trademarked it. And I'm marketing it in order to bring forth the content that I need to talk about. It is so much going on in the world that, you know, I need to speak on it. So that's what I will be doing. And um, overlay, just for a definition, is to, all right, well, you see, I have animals. <laughs> overlay is to cover the surface of something with a coating. Uh, another definition I found was something laid as a covering over something else. And so uh, I'm fan and I'm hot. And so with that being the case, that's what overlay is. An underlay is something that lays under a surface. It is, it, it, it is the first layer of a two layer situation, which is what we find ourselves in um, quite often. And I'm, I'm bringing those um, perspectives to the table. So Alton, you are my guest today. Uh, would you uh, introduce yourself? My name is Alton or Alton Gaston, depending on where you're from, and I'm a hairstylist. That's right. And you, he, Alton has been one of my running partners for a few decades. So he's going <laughs> to, he, he will be on helping with technical things as needed and giving me some motivation as we move through this show. All right. So. Um, we have invited uh, Greg Palace to be one of my guests for today. Oh, let me find this book. And Greg Palace has a new book out. It's called How Trump Stole 2020. And Greg, yes, yes, he sure did. He sure did. And look, Greg is coming on right now. Let's see if we can get Greg on. Um, Yep, there he is. Uh, Greg, we were just talking about you. <laughs> that was perfect timing. How are you? Oh, I don't have any audio. Let me get you unmuted there. <laughs> okay. Thanks. I'm unmute, I think. Yeah. Yes. How are you? Uh, you? You came in just as I was holding up your book. Oh, I like that book. Yes, that was, Look, that was I love it. I love it. That's right. This is perfect timing. Um, yes. So thank you, Greg Palace, for joining me today, joining us today. And yes. this is the premiere of Overlay Underlay. It's okay. a talk show that I will be hosting every Thursday at 7. And Overlay for the Underlay is a saying that uh, uh, for few of us in my social network have been using for decades. And uh, overlay for the underlay is exactly what it is, where we see narratives that people put out as being the truth. That's the overlay. 
when they are actually doing some devious things, uh, which is the underlay. And so I'm here to bring forth the underlay of the overlay they want us to believe. And yeah, that's well. such a great lead in for you because in your work as an investigative journalist, you've been doing just that. And uh, I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited to have you here. I'm gonna give you a round of applause. Yeah, okay. I'll assume that there's, that there's applause out there or maybe yes. some, applause, some booze. That's but, right. We're, uh, we're, we're clapping for you, but would you please introduce yourself sure. and um, one thing that we will be talking about is your work uh, in relation to Georgia. Um, and yes. You, you don't live here, but we'll talk about it. But yes, please introduce yourself and then tell us a bit about your work and then we'll talk about your book. Well, I've been investigating for uh, Al Jazeera, for Rolling Stone, for Salon, for The Guardian, uh, and several other papers, um, wow. but wow. mainly for Rolling Stone. I've been investigating Georgia for seven years now. When are you guys wow. going to get your act together so I can <laughs> stop going to Atlanta, especially in the summer when it's icky? You know? <laughs> so, yes, okay, so let right. me explain. As you see from the hat, I'm an investigative reporter. I've been doing this for 25 uh, years, but in the last 20 years, um, I've been concentrating on what the rest of the media tends to call vote suppression. But I got to tell you, as you well know, if someone steals you your car, you don't say, my car has been suppressed. My car has been suppressed. No, it's been stolen. And they're stealing votes. And they're not just stealing votes randomly. We know that they're stealing votes from voters of color. And Georgia is the center of the vote thieving operation. You're the test ground. You're where they take the the uh, the methods of blocking voters of color for a test drive. And when that works in Georgia, you take it nationwide. Now, of course, Georgia is important. You are a swing state and yeah. the census, though they'll probably cheat, the census should this year show that Georgia is the first deep south uh, white minority state. Mm -hmm. So what's going on? So how do you end up with, with a deep red uh, state government? Um, well, the answer is because the, because there just ain't enough white guys in uh, in Georgia to elect well, old white guys to elect Brian Kemp and his crowd, so you, they went about eliminating the non-white guys. That's so right. let me go to 2018 when I was um, first in 16. Then I went to 18 um, when Stacey Abrams was running against Brian Kemp. And I first right. encountered Stacey Abrams. In fact, you'll see Stacey Abrams in my book. I interview her and Kemp um, in uh, How Trump Stole 2020. The interview with Stacey Abrams was very, uh, well, it was actually quite intellectual, actually, very intellectual and detailed and in going into the, some of the material. In fact, she found some stuff I didn't find. You know, Brian Kemp accused people of moving uh, over half a million people of leaving the state, moving out of the state. Uh, and one question is, where are all the moving trucks? Yes. <laughs> and she was removing, he was removing these people from the voter rolls, but it included people who moved into the state. Um, and Stacey Abrams found that for me. She says, these people are moving into the state, not out. But who, who is it that they're blocking who moved into the state? Well, we had um, um, a, um, a Gulf War veteran who contacted me because I sued Brian Kemp, the Palest Investigative Fund, my not-for-profit foundation, sued Brian Kemp in federal court and won. In fact, not only did we wow. win, but the judge, we didn't even have to have a trial. The judge said that Brian Kemp's nonsense statements to the court were basically baloney, didn't believe a word uh, him and his successor were saying. And so they said, Greg Palast wins, open up your files, and by the way, pay his lawyers. Um, so we got the list of people that Brian Kemp removed from the voter rolls. Uh, including Christine Jordan. Now, I was at the polling station in November of 2018 with uh, Christine Jordan. She was going there to vote for her 50th year at the same schoolhouse in Atlanta. 50 years. That's right. I school. remember that. Yeah. And, <laughs> and she went in and they said, no, you can't vote here. You're not registered here. And what? she had been voting there for decades. 50, this is going to be her 50th year. Yeah. Because she'd been voting for the five decades since her cousin, Martin Luther King, was murdered. Yes. King used to come to her. I, went, I only found out that King was her cousin when I went to her house and I saw pictures of King having dinner with the family. I said, oh, he came over for dinner once? She says, no, every Sunday. 
<laughs> so if they can remove, if they can remove Christine Jordan's vote after 50 years, they can go after yours. And they did after many. Yes. So here, but of course, while she, she was accused of leaving her home, she's been there almost the entire century of her life. Mm -hmm. But what was her crime? Her crime was voting while black. You know it. I know it. I caught him. Now, how did I catch them? I, Brian Kemp said all these people moved. How does he know you moved? Oh, he says that you've missed a couple of elections. By the way, Christine Jordan never missed an election. Are you kidding? Um, they say you missed a couple of elections. Well, so what? You have a right not to vote if you don't want to. And they send you a postcard. It looks like junk mail. You throw it away. So they say, well, if you've missed an election and didn't see our postcard, well, obviously you've left the state. You know that Justice Breyer of the Supreme Court said, well, if that's true, where are all moving trucks? I mean, you should have... Where are all the moving trucks? With these half a million people, That's half a million families leaving. So what we did was I said, how do I know if someone's moved or not? Well, I, I literally try to call up as many as I could, but there's half, you know, half a million. So I went to the people that know where you live. I went to, to Amazon and eBay's experts. And you have to understand, they know exactly where you were last Thursday at 2 p.m. I'm sorry. There's no, there's no hiding <laughs> from Amazon. They have... <laughs> 240 databases. They know where you downloaded your, your, your uh, movies. They know where you've ordered pizza. They know where you got your socks. They know all these things and your cable bill and everything else. They've got it all. And so they know exactly where you live. And they said, guess what? They didn't just do a sample. They went through every single name, every voter who was wiped out by Brian Kemp. And they said, here's the list of 340,000 134 people who've never moved that Brian Kemp erased from the voter rolls saying that they left Georgia or Atlanta. That is wow. A third of a million wow. Georgians were removed from the voter rolls for leaving the state and they're right there. Right, never They're right there, like Christine Jordan, like uh, Jasmine Bakhtiar, wow. like Raheem Shabazz, the radio personality. All these people were on the scrub list, lost their vote. And also, by the way, that's just the beginning, the third of a million. Because if you move within your county, you don't have to re-register in Georgia. That's federal law. I mean, you can move, most people move in their neighborhoods. So there's another 100,000 people in there. So it gets towards half a million people wrongly, illegally removed from the I voter rolls of Georgia. And that's the story that I've been investigating. And by the way, I'm continuing on that. I'm now looking at the latest in the, in the purge game uh, by Kemp's successor. But it's definitely, you know, look, this is happening all over America. So they took the Kemp, the Kemp game, which defeated Stacey Abrams by eliminating her voters. Yes. And they took it to Ohio, where 800,000 people have been removed. They've taken it to 25, 30 states, removing, in the past two years, are you ready for this? 16.7 million people have been purged from the voter rolls. Now, some oh. really did move, but we figure about half were illegally removed. And here's the terrible thing. You don't know it. You don't know it because you're not, you don't have no, they don't send you a note saying, well, we knocked you off the voter rolls. Why would they do that? And then you just get back on, wouldn't you? Yes, right. what, so you don't know. So you're asking for your mail-in ballot and you don't get it. Mm -hmm. Or the, the other trick that Brian Kemp was pulling is saying, if you, if you don't vote, if you're on their inactive list, which is a crap list, by the way, but let's say it's true. He's not going to send you the card which says, do you want a mail-in ballot? By the way, when the ACLU complained about that, so you can't pick out some voters and not send them requests for absentee mail-in ballots. He said, well, I'll solve that. No one will get the card. They're trying to make it as hard as possible for you to vote by mail. But here's the other thing. Please, please, please don't end up like Christine Jordan or Raheem Shabazz or others and show up at the polls and find out that you can't vote. Or even worse, you're waiting for that mail-in ballot. It doesn't and arrive. It now, and, and I'll close with this one thing and then I'll take questions or whatever else. Mm -hmm. uh, this is all, by the way, laid out in my book, How Trump Stole 2020. It centers, the whole story centers in Georgia, by the way. Yes. Um, because you are so important in the electoral scheme of things. So um, what I, what I want to mention is that if you know, if, if they've wiped you out, you can easily get back on in Georgia, mm -hmm. which is that you do have the county boards of elections and even the secretary of state of Georgia, Google it, will uh, 
list if you are still registered to vote. He said, well, why should I even bother looking to see if I'm registered? I've been voting the same it's place. Very Christy important. Jordan, it was 50 years. Yes. Please check your registration. And if you're missing or it's the information's wrong, please, 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 right there, register online, take a uh, you know, screenshot, get a confirmation by email, hold on to that thing, make sure everyone you know goes to the Secretary of State's site or your County Board of Election, Find out if you're registered. And by the way, gregpalast.com, I do have up that last purge list, and we'll be putting up the new purge list yes. in about two weeks, where okay. you'll be able to look up to see if you're on Brian Kemp's latest hit list. And this is so important, Greg, and your work. Uh, I want to thank you on behalf of all of the Georgia voters, and really voters across the country, because we knew, I know, that there is not only voter suppression, but election stealing going on. And what I tell everyone, yes, voting w does work as long as the people on the other end counting the votes aren't corrupt and aren't cheating. And that's well, one of the biggest things here with absentee ballots. Uh, what we saw in this past election was that um, absentee ballots were being uh, rejected by the new machines. And so um, we found a number of irregularities uh, in how those rejected ballots was being, were being duplicated on site, um, whether uh, uh, election officials were actually checking each one of those duplica duplicated uh, ballots because by law, there are supposed to be three different people checking those. And well, mm -hmm. another thing that we saw happening, and this is back to overlay for the underlay, how um, this is what I said when our new uh, Secretary of State, Rassenberger, Berg, yes, when he gleefully held a press conference and said, we're sending out absentee ballots to all Georgia voters. And I turned my head to my TV and rolled my eyes because I knew there was some mess in the game because there is no Republican running anywhere to allow people to vote in mass numbers. So we went to a new voting machine uh, for June, right? Mm -hmm. And so the absentee ballot is their easiest tool of stealing elections. Yes. And um, and, and that's why um, th there is concern. I have concern about mail-in ballots and absentee ballots, and here's why. In the states that, uh, in, in me doing analysis, looking at the states that have um, effective, if you will, uh, mail-in, most of those areas are, are white areas, right? Oregon, they're, Washington. They are majority white. So in those states, uh, uh, the, the GOP uh, uh, and even some Democrats uh, uh, will go along with it if it allows them to keep their seat. But they are saying, well, here's where it has worked you know, effectively. Yeah, but those are all white states. Yes. And so they have no need to try to rig in those states. They well, exactly. Well, in, in, in states where there are people of color. Well, as you know, Portland, in fact, I could give you, you're, you're right, exactly. Portland has only a 6% black population. It is the whitest city in America, major city in America. And so, yeah, so they let people in Portland vote because there's not enough black people to, to shaft but you out of your ballot. That's right. That's right. I mean, it's, it's, so Washington state. That is and right. So the West Coast, but okay, the West Coast where everyone like me, we get a ballot automatically mailed to everyone. We have a system for counting them. And, and it, these are one party states anyway, there's only Democrats here anyway. Yes. So we're not America. And this is what I'm concerned with, with um, a lot of politicians, including Democrats who think that absentee ballots, mail-in ballots are a miracle. Well, you know on the ground where the rubber hits the road is that, and is exactly what I said in the chapter in my book in How Trump Stole 2020, I have a chapter called Mail-In Madness, where you better be careful with your mail-in vote because you got it exactly. There, first of all, one in 10 ballots that were requested in Georgia were never mailed to the never voter. Never mailed. Okay, so that's one in 10. That's now, right. let me tell you something. You know what? That's the average. 
All over America, the average, according to federal statistics, one in 10 voters who ask for mail-in ballot don't get them. And you know what color those people are. Yeah, that, they're that's black. One. Of and course, and because, the, by yeah. the way, the post office has always had a terrible time delivering mail in urban areas, in big buildings, you've got a huge problem. So that's one. Mm -hmm. Second, you, you are the first, the very first radio host to, know, to say what others are completely ignorant of which is that once you mail in your ballot, there's still a very good chance that they're going to reject it because remember, it's not a secret ballot. They're looking at your ballot and they'll say, we don't like that signature. Mm -hmm. 141,000 voters in America lost because some moron, some idiot, some, some racist in a, in a Hawaiian shirt, some boogaloo boy said, I don't like that signature. And you <laughs> lost your vote. Yeah. Postage due. Um, you, you used a red pen or a blue pe or a pencil to mark your ballot, law, they'll challenge your vote. Postage due, 100,000 voters lost their votes for, for postage due. Mm -hmm. um, so in Georgia, by the way, in Georgia, you're probably going to have to use two stamps. Be very, very careful. Better weigh yes. that ballot. I think it's two stamps. It Don't is. put on one. Yes. And, and, then, and then there's all kinds of stuff like you. Stacey Abrams, by the way, almost lost her vote. In the Georgia humidity, and, and all over America this was happening, you have an internal envelope. And in the humidity, that often the internal, what they call the security envelope, the secrecy envelope, or secrecy sleeve, as they call it, mm -hmm. that will sometimes get uh, glued sick. shut, you know, because it's, right. you know, it's cause the heat. Yeah. Had happened to Stacey Abrams. Now, if you, she is, has a law degree, she knows that she had to go back to the county board of elections, get a brand new ballot, and then fill that out. Most people don't know that. So for example, in New York, in New York, hundreds of ballots in one primary were disqualified because people ripped open the envelope and put the ballot and then, put, and then uh, uh, try to close it. They either used a new envelope, which you can't do, you gotta use their envelope, or in some cases, they put scotch tape to close it. Mm -hmm. Don't put tape on the ballot. Yeah. So it's all these gotcha games. And remember who's opening you. So we, what we need is, young, healthy people who can, wearing masks and shields PPE. and gloves, believe That's me. That's right, PPE. I want you not only to volunteer to be a poll worker on the day, mm -hmm. but I want you to volunteer to stay for the count that night and then the next day on November 4th and 5th and 6th and 7th and 10th and 11th and 12th when they'll be counting the ballots. I can tell yeah, you here in California and in New it York, we take about more than a month Yes. To, to uh, count uh, mail-in ballots, more than a month. And which, by the way, is a big problem because under law, somehow you're going to have to get all these ballots counted in a nearly impossible time to meet the uh, federal uh, the federal deadlines. That's it's right. It's going to be murder. So we need that's, you to volunteer. And that's what happened here in Georgia for June uh, primary. Mm -hmm. uh, what happened, they, uh, we got... Uh, an enormous amount of uh, absentee ballots that came in, right? And so I got uh, complaints. I mean, managers here in Gwinnett who work uh, at the election office, they were sequestered in, in conference rooms uh, with folks trying to uh, um, count these absentee ballots, running them through the scanner. So it was so many that they were not following any of the rules, it would have been impossible. They would still be counting absentee ballots right now from June 9th if Gwinnett County had actually done that. And even in 2018, Greg, here mm -hmm. in Gwinnett County, they threw out over <laughs> 56,000 absentee ballots. And, and wow. that was because they said, uh, uh, you know, it, uh, wow. the signatures didn't match or they didn't color in the bubble, right? Oh, you know, there's yeah. this, but this is what I'm saying. Uh, we have to sound the alarm on this because this is definitely overlay for the underlay. And well, but, you know, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm so glad. I think you're one of the probably, in fact, not even question. You are absolutely the most informed host I, I've encountered all year because you understand what the dangers are in the mail-in balloting. Not that you're against it because- No, know, look, I'm not. Just because just, just Trump says, don't mail in your ballot doesn't well, mean that, I, I mean, he's, all, he's wrong because it doesn't, yeah. you know, you're not going to get fraudulent ballots. You don't get it. No, no one found 100,000 ballots from Bolivia That's in right. the Gwinnett count. No. So it's silly. 
But that doesn't mean that it's safe to vote by mail. You're going to have to be super careful, even when you ask your ballot way in advance. I know that I spoke to Andrea Young, who is the head of the ACLU of Georgia. Yes. Now, and this is a very sophisticated voting rights lawyer. So she asked for her ballot and for her husband's way in advance, 45 days in advance. She got hers. He got his on June 10 for the June 9 primary. Yes. These are the games that they're playing. Yes. So you have to be super careful. That's right. Super careful. And by the way, try to avoid the post office to the, you know, it's murder because they don't, Georgia is one of the few states that does not, according to the ACLU, I was just uh, speaking with them. They said that Georgia is one of the few states that does not allow you to take your absentee ballot and just drop it off at the polling station. In other words, that way you don't have to wait in line. There are drop off points, but they're not at the polling station. It's just completely crazy. That's right. And they have designated uh, ballot, absentee ballot drop off. And it's, you're right, it's not at the polling station. But use them. Don't go to the post office, please. No, yes, because the post office, just in general, in, in Georgia, um, I, and probably all across the nation, uh, we here in my neighborhood, I get mail from someone, my, my number is 208. Well, 208 on another street gets my mail. I get her mail. And we, you know, it's a thing, we, we take each other's mail to one another because a person is not looking at the, you know, when they're sorting, whatever, it's not going to the right address. And so these are the problems that exist and we cannot hold the UP, the postal service already was having issues. That's so right. to try to make them responsible for all of these ballots, but that's why uh, the secretary of state of Georgia was so happy, so gleeful, to send out absentee ballots. Yeah. Here, send me your ballots and I'll reach, throw them out. That's right. You know, or okay. maybe I won't send them to you at all. File hey. 13. Uh, file 13 is where yeah, we exactly. uh, are putting those ballots. And so. By the way, I, I assume we are recording this. I want to send this around. This is super informative. Oh, yes. I'm, got, I'm recording and I will send it to you because my goal, uh, Greg, is to make sure we have informed voters and educated voters. That's why everything you were saying about going to uh, Georgia, the Secretary of State website, sos.ga.gov is where you can go. And I tell everybody, even when they're getting ready to uh, uh, at, apply for your uh, absentee ballot, make sure that, you know, just go online and check your registration information, how your name is listed, you know, all of that stuff. So, Thank you. You, you know, we've got to do some, as they say, uh, dot the I and cross the T's. We've got to do a lot of that, but we've got to teach people who are clueless that, you know, most people are accustomed to going into the poll and voting. So absentee, that entire process is new for a lot of folks. Uh, so we do need to uh, educate them on that, but I'm ringing the bell and thank and you. thank you so much for uh, all of your work. And I love the cartoons. Let's talk. I definitely want to talk about the cartoons in your your. Is Ted, uh, is, did Ted make it on? Is Ted Rawl with us? No, he didn't make. I think oh, okay. he's moving. Just, just so you know, he's uh, he's uh, in the middle of. Uh, he's moving out of the country. <laughs> right. That's what they told me. They said he was in the middle of moving. So we will. We'll definitely grab him, but can you talk a little bit about uh, his work? Yes. So in the middle of How Trump Stole 2020 is a 48-page comic book by the wonderful uh, investigative journalist himself, Ted Rall, yes. great journalist. And he did some really wickedly tough um, cartoons of, uh, illustrating the points of the book about how they play games with the vote. Now, under, by the way, understand, I'm not against Trump. You want to, I'm for democracy. You want to vote for Trump? You want to vote for Kemp? Hey, I'm willing to live with it if that's the choice of the voters. But unfortunately, in the case of Kemp, I can tell you 100%, it wasn't the choice of the voters. It was the choice of the trickery. It was the yes. choice of the games. It was the choice yes. of rejecting ballots. It was the choice made by his little computer knocking out Christine Jordan. Yes. And Donald Trump as well. And you'll see in the cartoons, Donald Trump is, and in the book, in detail, that Brian Kemp showed Donald Trump how you eliminate voters by the millions. And you saw, and it details how Trump stole the election in 2016. That's why I say he already stole it in 2020. But I wanna say, and as Ted would point out, it's not a prediction, it's a warning. And we can unsteal the election. We can bust the burglary. So 
you, we can take actions, especially number one, check your registration, be very careful filling out that ballot um, and don't use the post office. A lot of other things at the back of the book, by the way, we do have Greg and Ted's new improved ballot condom. It's the cartoon at the very back of the book, which tells you how to save your vote. You know, the simple steps that you discussed, Cheryl. Yes. And we will definitely be sharing that. And we want everybody to get your, your book. Uh, what, what's the best place to get it on Amazon? I'm, I'm, you're, you're, whatever, whatever floats your boat, you know, whether well, it's Amazon, Barnes Noble. Your, your website. Local that, bookstores or go to my website and you, give it's there too. Or give it'll direct you. Address. Okay. And I'm going to put your web address in the notes as well. Real simple. GregPallast.com. You got to get this book. This details everything of how elections are being, elections are being stolen across this wow. country. Wow. And Amazing. it's a quick read. It's a page turner. It's a quick read. And it really informs you. So I want everyone who, who's watching the video to make sure you get his uh, latest book. He has many others. But just know this is very important to the democracy of this country. And Greg Palace has been putting in this work. So wow. thank you so much, Greg, for all welcome. of your, your diligent work. Because a lot of people would give up. But you have, and I even like in the book, <laughs> how you talk about how you even got started investigating elections. You know, and, and that's, that comes from being, uh, I, I call you a PI. That's why I love your hat. <laughs> well, I was, just so you know, before I was an investigative reporter, I actually was an investigator. Ah. I big, did big investigations for the Justice Department and attorneys general all over the country. So I know the criminal mind pretty well. Damn. And what you have is a bunch of politicians. <laughs> you have basically a crime syndicate running your state. I'm sorry, I got to say it out loud. Say and it fact, again. You'll see in the book the Please discussion of all again. of, Please you know, the, you, you know, one of my targets of my investigation was Southern Company, Georgia Power, mm -hmm. you know, the, the ripping off the, the ratepayers of Georgia for years. And understand, this is what's behind it. You can't keep ripping off. So Georgia Power rips off the legis the the ratepayers, the electric payers of Georgia, mm -hmm. and Georgia Pacific is that's owned by the Koch brothers. Yeah, you know, that Georgia Pacific building. What do you think? They need a big building like that for toilet paper downtown? And, and no, that's downtown the Coke Industries Atlanta. headquarters, that's my right. friends. Yes. So it's follow the money. And that's what I did as an investigator. I was investigating the Cokes. I was investigating Georgia Power before I became a journalist. And that's when I learned that when I became a journalist, follow the money. And in Georgia, it's the money that rules. Yes. Yes, great. And that is yes. so sad. That is so sad. And, and that is the overlay for the underlay because well, folks in Georgia will just scream, oh, go vote, go vote. Well, how, how is it that Gwinnett County, the most diverse county in Georgia, has always been run by white people? That's <laughs> it. I mean, the, the odds of that happening, vote after vote after vote, is impossible. That's just not statistically possible. Well, I'll tell you what it is. Yeah. Well, I, so I just said, Georgia is a minor, a white minority state now. Yes. So, so what's going on here? And the answer They're is there's a, third, there's a third color involved. That's Green. Right. Money. And that's the problem. That's so for example, when Stacey Abrams said, I'm not going to pay for Georgia. I'm not going to make people pay for Georgia Power's crazy junk nuclear plant that they're trying to build. That thing will never produce a kilowatt of electricity. Yeah. It's going to cost you billions and billions. And she said, I'm not going to let these guys fleece the, the bill payers of Georgia right. and they went wild. So that's where all the money came in for Brian Kemp. That's right. They, that's, and that's how they operate in Georgia. That's, that's how that money rules politics and business right. in Georgia. But right. we can take it back. There's and not, yes. they can't. Now this is very, very important. If, if there's one thing I got, in fact, the book also ends with a picture of me uh, there in Atlanta with, um, Martin Luther King III and his daughter playing the piano for me. Um, yes. And we're talking about this. You know, it's real simple. They can't steal all the votes all the time. And I, by the way, I, I talked to Obama about this uh, when I was at Rolling Stone. It, the, the point is 
they, you can overwhelm the steal. They're going to steal a lot of votes in Georgia. But as we saw with Stacey Abrams, they had a, the amount of votes they had to steal was just out of control. Uh, they had to steal a half a million votes. Yes, they and they did. But they can't do it every us. single time. They can't. So be aware. You can overcome the steal, but you're going to have to follow the steps to protect your vote, and you're going to and don't steal your own vote by not voting. Of course, that's number one. Yeah. Right. Yes, and I don't care who you're voting for. Go vote. You know, register to vote, exercise your right, and become informed uh, uh, voters. Look up. You know, you can Google. You know, these devices that everybody walk around with. This is a powerful computer at your hand. You can Google and find out about everybody on a ticket. You can find out whether they are, are uh, uh, you know, concerned about issues that matter to you, to your family, that mean something to your everyday life. So, um, yes, we have work to do, but we have uh, let we have a little over two months to make sure everybody knows what to do come November 3rd, uh, the deadline in Georgia for uh, registration in order to vote in the general election in November is October 5th. So we have time to educate and also start preparing for the battle that we have ahead of us to stop them from stealing the election in 2020. Absolutely. We can do it. And it does require that you check your registration. That's the number one problem in Georgia, the number one problem in Georgia. And um, I'm hoping there's some great organizations out there to work with the NAACP, Greg Griggs, their great uh, attorney, the ACLU. These are re you have really have some very powerful. In fact, absolutely. There's no question. Atlanta is the center of the civil rights movement of America. Yeah. So you've got work cut out for you, but you've got the tools and the people and the resources to do it. They can't steal all the votes all the time. So we can steal back the election. It, it you know, there's no reason for, for games here. We, we have to take responsibility. I mean, one thing about that shock of Mrs. Jordan at 92 being told you can't vote here anymore is that I hope that that went viral, that video yes, that I took. It did. With my team. And I got to tell you that I'm just hoping it woke people up to having to check their registration. Too many of your outlets in Atlanta ran the film, but they didn't explain the problem. They said, yeah. isn't it oh, isn't it terrible that Martin Luther King's old cousin couldn't vote? No, no, no. Yeah. It is a, not terrible. It's a program. It's part of a mass program of eliminating voters of color. Let's talk real and let's, so let's take it on. Don't expect them to correct their own system. You're going to have to do it yourself. Wow, that explains a lot. Thank you. That explains a lot. Uh, explains Al, did you have I'm a sorry. question for Greg? Go ahead. Yes. I uh, just wanted to comment. That explains a lot. That explains a lot why, you know, even after I moved, they told me I wasn't registered to vote. And I've been voting for decades. And all of a sudden, you're telling me I'm not registered to vote? Now I don't even understand it. I don't understand it. And even when I sent in my mail in ballot, I'd rather just go ahead and to find those locations that you talked about, Greg, because I didn't know this was happening. I had no clue this was actually happening. Yes. So we'll but, try to get the word out. We're yeah. going to have a follow-up. We're going to be following up in Georgia. By the way, uh, and I hope you'll have a chance. I do have an assistant uh, producer on the ground there um, who's I also the great hip-hop artist, Jevin Lamar, okay. who's just arrived in Atlanta. And so he'll be uh, working for us from there safely. Stay yeah. safe, Jevin, when you're working. Masks, yeah. gloves. <laughs> I'll get uh, contact information yes. from you. And definitely, because we will be doing a lot of work in making sure we are reaching people who um, are registered, making sure they're educated uh, uh, so that they can get their vote in and we can eliminate as many ways of their ballot being discarded, as well as reaching people who are eligible to vote but have not registered. That's so, right, but but you got a lot of people to re-register. You've got a you've got nearly a half a million people to re-register in your state, and that is a game changer in anybody's race. Yes, I don't know how you, that's a game changer. So yes, we will definitely make that a priority. And thank you again. 
uh, Greg, for ringing the alarm. Thank you for joining me on my first show. And this is powerful. Look at what we got out of it. But I'm definitely, I will send you this recording and we will get the word out. And this well, congrats. is- that, Go ahead, I'm sorry. I want to congratulate you on a great debut program. And I know I'm going to get it out there. So, so please, uh, when you send the tape, because we have this work to do. So try to, you know, obviously get people on your socials to get on and, and pass this around. This is your way to protect yourself. And like I say, at the back of the book, I've got the ballot condom by uh, the cartoon with tells you seven ways to save your ballot. Yes. But it's really simple stuff, but it requires work. It's not easy the way it used to be to vote. It's going to be much, much harder. And, uh, but we can do this. Yeah. We can do this. Yeah. They try to steal the vote all the time, but they can't steal every vote every time. And, and right. Georgia's ready for a real change. And that's why they are fighting so hard so to hard. stop you from voting. Yes, and this is what we're talking about. Protect your vote. Use uh, Ted and Greg's new and improved ballot condom. <laughs> Remember, they can't steal all the ballots all the time. That's right. Well, thank and you. I'm for gonna, I'm gonna take this information. I'm gonna take this and use it as well. And by the way, uh, feel free to take that ballot condom, even if people don't buy the book, and just copy that and pass it around, put it out on your socials. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm gonna scan that. Good. I, that would be a great graphic to have plastered all over social media. In fact, we have one you can pull right down a, a downloadable on your website at. Okay. GregPalace.com. At I'll GregPalace.com, okay, you can get the, the information. I, and everyone, go to GregPalace.com, P-A-L-A-S-T.com. Go there, and he has um, all of his books, but also the graphics, because it's up to us. Uh, this is, I tell folks, it's war. This is definitely war, because folks are trying to stop us from being able to vote. I don't care what your party affiliation they are trying to stop us from voting. So uh, we need all the team member and warriors on board. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Greg. Have a good rest of the week and the weekend. And I thank look forward you, to working thank with you. you. Thank you, you Alan. When, when okay. it's safe. Bye. Bye-bye. Right, bye-bye. Yes. And thank you all for this episode of Overlay for the Underlay. Alton, thank you for joining and uh, uh, being here with us along with uh, Greg Palace. And we're going to get this video out because this is, this is important information. Um, so until next Thursday at 7 p.m., I am Cheryl Renee Moses. I am your host of Overlay Underlay. And remember, the narrative that they put out before us is not always true. But if we dig deep and do a little critical thinking, we can always figure out the underlay of that overlay. So I'll see you next week. <laughs> and you can use my phrase, overlay for the underlay. I'm out. Peace. <laughs>